Please put your hands together for Filippo. Thank you for the introduction. So I'm Filippo. Uh, first of all, what is MX3D? We are a startup currently, and uh, we are developing a technology uh, to enable designers, architects, engineers, everybody to uh, create innovative structures and uh, disruptive methods of uh, creating with uh, metal and 3D printing on a very large scale. But what is uh, this presentation really about is what made our company possible. So what are the changes uh, that are happening now in our society that made possible the, yeah, the, the process of creating a startup from nothing? The first of all, and the most important of them, is the new industrial revolution. We are moving from Fordism to post-Fordism. Actually, we are already pretty much there in the post-Fordism, like new machines, flexible machines. Let's think about the robot. You can do everything with the robots. Uh, they are for car industry, uh, but also in uh, um, agriculture. Like, there are no barriers for what a robot could do. We have two uh, main methods of fabrication. Uh, we have uh, subtractive fabrication, like milling, lathing, and so on, and 3D printing, which is, uh, which is the latest baby in the um, fabrication world. Of course, 3D printing has limits. The main problems are the reduced printing area, like you can do tiny manufactures most of the time. It has long printing cycles. The machines are really expensive, and the materials are hard to find and also to manufacture because metal dust used for a laser powder bed, for instance, it's very toxic, it's, it's not the greatest form of metal you would like to have to deal with. And there is a high need of post-processing because, yeah, the structures are quite rough in the end. Back, in, uh, back four or five years ago, I was working in a design studio and we were working mostly with new technologies. And uh, at a certain point, we had to produce this chair that we designed. And in this slide, you can see every color in that chair is basically a different piece we had to split the chair into. It's like, it's like a puzzle, it's a metal puzzle. And then we had to group all these pieces and make them fit. So we are talking about around six runs of more than 4,000 euros each. That chair, fortunately, is for the R market, so customers are willing to pay an incredible amount of money, but still, I manufactured that chair, and not only the 3D printing, but also the assembly and the post-processing was, was a huge job. And it clearly stated that 3D printing is not yet ready for large structure. So what we decided to do, we decided to set up a research team, MX3D, and investigate better methods to create large structure in a material that could be more functional than plastic. So we thought about steel, because it opens a wide range of applications. So the solution we thought was to use robotics, it's widely up there, and uh, welding as a system to melt the metal and, and to work it, because uh, welding is a very well-established manufacturing technique. So uh, there is a lot of information out there. And yeah, of course, you need the software. You need to create a software to drive all these and the factors and the sensor that goes along with it. There is the background for it, and the background is that things are open. Technology has never been more affordable as it is now, never in the past. You can buy a robot, you can go online, and you can find the instruction to use that robot. You don't even need to go to the university, basically. So we begin, and it's a very hands-on approach. It was one person in one room with one robot doing a lot of testing. And that's what we came up with. This was the very first test, is uh, this little column of steel, which are really interesting, mostly because we also moved away from the classic layer-on-layer -layer 3D printing. So there are no support structure. Gravity is not a problem, almost. So, yeah. I think we, we all convened at that point that we created something interesting. Yeah, you can see that, uh, you know, you can print horizontal, you can also print upside down. And this was the first product, this is a designer product, it's a dragon bench uh, designed by a famous uh, Dutch artist. And it was about three meter by two, so it was a large piece. And it's all made with wireframe, fully 3D printed. There was a bit of manual assembly in there, but mostly because the robot that we used was a very small robot, it was not a large a uh, large robot like we have now. So what you do next, you scale up. We print around five tons per year, and that number is increasing rapidly. 
what is our strength? Of course, we can create a very large part. That's where everything begins. But we also can create smart structures so we can embed specific solution into those structures. Uh, there you see a pipe with a sort of uh, macro lattice type of structure in it and the freedom of shape. So uh, not only layer and layer printing, but also the dots, also the possibility to create forms with this wireframe uh, method. How this is possible? It's possible with a combination of tools where the machine is one, so you see the very large robot printing a large part, but also how the machine is used. So uh, in, the another, in another circle, you see the machine moving along the structure that it's printing. And then, of course, there is all the design part of it, which is design for assembly. Assembly, it's, of course, necessary. And the more you can design the assembly, the more your, your story makes sense in the end. And it's also easy and cheaper to manufacture. This is a brief example of what we did. So this is the biggest thing we printed so far in one run. And it's two and a half by uh, three meter. Uh, stainless steel is a room divider, very heavy, uh, but of course for the art market. And then we made a bike because everybody likes bikes and they're easy to make. But they also are interesting because there is a load case on the bike. So you can also stress test what you're making. And this was the first big commercial project we did. This is a bar. It's all printed with stainless steel for the Museum of Modern Art in Miami. Architects came to us and said, OK, we want to do something special. Can you do it for us? Yes. And then we started to work with them because it's a two-way communication. They are the architects, we are the manufacturer, and we have to train them on how to use our technology. And this is the most important part. How do you give tools to enable everybody to work with something that is unknown so how do you communicate what the technology can do, uh, how it can be used, and what are the challenges still open for this technology? So we decided as a team at MX3D that we should have gave the good example and create something special, something new, like we had to push, push the boundaries of our own technology. So because we are located in Amsterdam, and uh, it's a city full of canals, full of waters, we decided to print a bridge because it fits well with the city, but also because it's something that everybody can use. People can just walk over the bridge and see something different, see how the future might look like in a few years. We were inspired by tradition. So on the left side, we see how a bridge was built many, many years ago, 60, 70 years ago, and how we wanted to print our bridge. So back then, the machines were already moved on the structure while they were building it. So we said, well, we could do the same. We can move the machine along the structure while we're printing it. It's not made with standard components. There is not a single I-beam or, or truss in this geometry. So we partner with many companies, and we created the digital twin. And that digital twin literally means there is a digital version of that bridge that is connected with sensors. So everything happens in the bridge happens in the digital version of it. We also tested it in proper ways. Yeah, you can see this is many tons of water and concrete. We jumped on it. That's the best test we did so far. Springy. So these are the, the sensor that we, that we put on the bridge. And then we inaugurated it uh, last summer um, during the Dutch Design Week. You can move it in one piece. It's really nice. Clearly, you can see that it's something unique. It, it, the material, first of all, there is no post-processing, it's rough. It looks like it came out of a spaceship. The future is open mostly to the companies that are going to trust this technology enough to create something unique. And uh, this was it. Thank you very much for your attention.